So here's the thing. I've been asked to come up with some uh, more quick methods of working things out. So um, I went to the genius of the operation, my brother, and uh, he's come up with this uh, quicker, even quicker, actually, course to steer uh, method. But it can only be used if you're travelling at 90 degrees-ish to the tide. So what I thought I'd do uh, is I'm going to go from Yarmouth to Lymington uh, because the tide generally flows directly across uh, your uh, track, your ground track that you want to, to make. So this can only be used when uh, that's the scenario. So uh, this is it. Uh, this is another quick course to steer method. So basically, uh, the quick course to steer when the ground track is 90 degrees to the tide. So you, your course adjustment is the tidal rate divided by your estimated boat speed multiplied by 60. Okay, this is the one in 60 rule. So I've plotted it on the chart, as you can see, and we'll have a look at that because it's not that I don't believe, uh, believe the method, but I, I thought I'd try it out. So what I've done is I've used a, uh, the Yarmouth of Limington with a high water minus two. The tidal rate was 2.5 at Springs. It's just easy, and it happened to be going at 0 0.85 uh, degrees. Um, I've estimated boat speed of um, five knots. So when I measured my ground track uh, to the point that I want to be at, it was 339 degrees. Um, when I've taken my tide divided by my boat speed, I've got uh, 0.5 multiplied by 60 gives me 30. So this means that I would adjust my course into tide by 30 degrees. So my course to steer to stay on my ground track would be 309. So not being a non-believer, I've basically, what I've done here is I've taken myself to just below the entrance because the tide's going to push me up, gives me time to get my main down and I'll be just carried towards the entrance to the, uh, to the river. So I'll just show you here. I put my ground track on there and get that to north. So that's given me 338339. Then I use the quick course to steer method, two and a half knots of tide in that direction. And then my five knot boat speed, which I struck off along my ground track there. Okay, so basically now, um, let's see if we get what we should have, which is 309. Let's turn that up to north. And bingo. There it is, 309. Happy days. So this can be used if the tide is a, a roughly around 90 degrees to your um, course. So this is uh, another quick method um, and this is to work out your interpolation or computation of tidal rates rather than using the uh, table available. So to work it out fairly quickly, if you're not either on leaps or on springs and you're mid-range and you need an accurate calculation, you take the range for the day, divide it by the spring range for the area that you're in. So training chart-wise, it would be Victoria, Solent, it would be Portsmouth. Then you multiply that by the spring rate that's on the um, arrow in the Tidal Stream Atlas or on the diamond. Now this works for um, a one hour plot or question. So what I've done is I've taken <clears throat> Victoria on the 22nd of October. So I'm using the, uh, the training charts for this. So I've taken the 22nd of October. I have my high water at uh, 10.44. Obviously, it's in a non-shaded area, so we had an hour, um, and it's 5.4, and my low water after that is 1.1. So my range for the day uh, is then 4.3. Then we need to look at the mean ranges, and if we look at the mean range for Victoria, okay, our spring mean range is 4.9. So we have the range for the day, which is 4.3, divide it by our 4.9, and then we need to look at the arrow or the tidal diamond that we, uh, we want to use. And I've taken Victoria 
or two hours before high water Victoria. And I'm looking at this arrow here. Okay, so we can see there that the neap, uh, uh, the neap rate is 1.2 and the spring rate is 2.3. So uh, then we we multiply our range for the day divided by our mean range. We multiply by 2.3 and we're left with, let's say, 2. I mean, it works out at 2.01. Now, as with all these things, not being an unbeliever, um, I did actually do this on the computation of rates table just to make sure it does work. So here's our computation of rates table. OK, and uh, we do the usual thing. We put the rate on the uh, NEAP range, which was 1.2 on our NEAP line. We put the spring rate, which was 2.3. We then take our range for the day, which was 4.3. We take it along to where these two join up and then up again and you will see that we are just past our rate of two so yeah 2.01 probably bang on the money so there's a, a quick calculation you can use rather than using and uh, this table